Enemies of nuclear are constantly looking for new arguments to convince other people that nuclear is bad. I recently heard an argument that I've never heard like this before. So it goes like this. Because 70% of the energy that is released from fission doesn't get captured in the nuclear power plant and turned into electricity, it is therefore released into nature and therefore contributes to climate change. Now, we must keep in mind that whatever we do on the planet basically contributes to climate change because everything we do requires electricity, requires energy of some sort. And all these energy conversions inherently produce heat. So let's get back to the question at hand. Does the waste heat from nuclear power plants contribute to climate change, yes or no? So any of these energy questions should always include other energy options and it should always be contrasted with something else. So uh, for instance, uh, how much does the waste heat from renewables add to climate change or how much do the carbon dioxide emissions from coal plants and gas plants add to the climate change problem? So in order to add some context, I'm going to give you a yes but answer because i'm going to compare uh not just the waste heat from nuclear to coal and gas and renewables but i'm also going to uh, compare the carbon dioxide emissions from nuclear to coal and gas and renewables so first we need to take a brief look at our planet there are two main sources that warm the planet so first is the planet's core with all its residual formation heat plus uh, roughly one third of the heat that comes from nuclear decay. Now, secondly, the biggest source of heat for the planet is the sun, and it delivers roughly 340 watts per square meter. So in total, the energy that hits the earth from the sun is roughly 10,000 times bigger than the primary energy that we as mankind consume today. So that's a staggering figure. So carbon dioxide. Uh, this is one of these gases that surrounds the planet and it helps trap some heat of the sun uh, in that atmosphere. And this is what we need to keep our planet livable. So for me, it's simple. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere within the correct bandwidth is great because it makes her planet habitable. But too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the oceans is going to lead to problems. So when we consider the numbers, we see that in 1850, the carbon dioxide levels were at 280 parts per million. One part per million translates to roughly 7.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So in 1850, we had roughly 2200 gigatons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now today we are at 3,300 gigatons. So that's 1,100 gigatons more than we had in 1850 at the start of the industrial age. So when we look at the most recent news, James Hansen basically, he, he told us that we already reached 1.5 degrees. Now most people who are talking about 1.5 degrees are talking about reaching 1.5 degrees by 2100. So adding 1,100 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the air, uh, has caused the global temperature to rise by one and a half degrees uh, by 2023 instead of 2100. Now, it's also important to note that it's not just carbon dioxide that is warming the planet. There's also other factors that contribute to the heating of the planet, like reduced albedo, increased methane emissions, thawing permafrost. There's a lot of factors there that add to the increasing problem. So what does this carbon dioxide uh, issue have to do with the question at hand? So when people say, okay, nuclear waste heat is a problem, we have to add more context. And nuclear waste heat in itself, when you just look at it, isolated from everything else, then it looks like a problem. However, when we add context and when we add other factors, then we are going to see that nuclear waste heat actually isn't as big of a contributing factor as some people want you to believe. And since carbon dioxide emissions are a large part of the problem, we have to factor it in as well. If we compare, for instance, 1000 megawatts of coal, gas, 
nuclear, wind, and solar, then one would be inclined to say, okay, nuclear is obviously the worst because out of all the technologies that give us uh, thermal power production, nuclear emits the most waste heat into the surroundings. From that perspective, people would say, yes, obviously nuclear is worst, but suppose that we need 100,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. We consider this problem from that perspective, then we get a whole different picture. So first we need to consider how much waste heat is generated. Now, solar would emit the most waste heat. But when we take a uh, panel efficiency of, let's say, 25%, which is generous, then creating 100,000 terawatt hours of electricity would also create 300,000 terawatt hours of wasted energy. Now, secondly, nuclear would be worst when we use light water reactors with a reasonably low conversion ratio of 30% then nuclear would put up to 233,000 terawatt hours of uh, waste heat into the oceans and into the atmosphere. And then we have wind. Wind is probably the best, and that's simply because uh, there's not a lot of uh, infrared heat that is being uh, produced by wind turbines. The only thing that you get is the, it, within the nacelle, within the mechanics, there is some friction there that will generate some heat which gets emitted. And finally, we see coal and gas. Now, coal and gas are, are looking pretty good in this, in this comparison because they have a reasonably high energy conversion ratio because of their high temperature heat. This means that it puts less waste heat into the environment. However, um, people would be willing to burn me at the stake when I said that coal and gas were the best because then obviously the whole global warming problem would be solved by building more coal and gas plants. And that's why the question needs nuance, needs more context, uh, because waste heat alone is a very poor metric by which to determine whether something is sustainable or not. So if we spread this waste heat out over the surface of the planet, and we compare it to a radiative forcing of 1.9 watts per square meter, which is uh, what people say that we get when we have 1.5 degrees of warming, then we see that the waste heat from nuclear uh, power plants, when they produce 100,000 terawatt hours per year, is tiny. And then it's 0.05 watts per square meter of 2.8 percent of those 1.9 watts. But when we consider the carbon dioxide emission, we get a totally different picture. So let's assume that we need 100,000 terawatt hours per year of electricity. And let's assume that we need this for 25 years. And let's see what will happen if we power the entire planet using either coal, gas, nuclear, or one of the renewables. Now, in this period, if we let coal power mankind, then it will emit a staggering 2,500 gigatons of carbon dioxide emissions. Now, if we take nuclear, solar, or wind, uh, I basically set them to 10 grams CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour, uh, then you only get 25 gigatons. So that's a gigaton per year, which is compared to coal and compared to gas, nothing. Now, if we switch to a non-fossil fuel system, which is the intention, then those figures would go down towards zero in the end. Now, getting back to these scenarios, uh, powering the world using coal alone for the next 25 years uh, would push up our carbon dioxide levels to 740 parts per million. We're now at 420. So we would be well on our way doubling the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere if we only use coal for the next 25 years, uh, creating 100,000 terawatt hours of electricity each year. And it's two and a half times more than we had in 1850 uh, at 280 ppm at the start of the coal age. So to answer the question, does nuclear waste heat contribute to climate change? The answer is yes, but uh, it is too small to matter. And the benefits of reducing our emissions from fossil fuels vastly outweigh the effects that waste heat has on the climate. Now we have to contextualize this a bit again because there are some adverse local effects. For instance, if you use uh, surface water as a source for your cooling and you, put the, and you put the waste heat back into the surface water, then this may have effects on water-based organisms, for instance. 
So uh, this is something we always need to keep in mind. But uh, making the world a more livable space for our children is worth these considerations. And with that, you've reached the end of the video. Awesome. I hope that you learned something from this video. Now, I know that this is a contentious subject, so if you have to add something to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. Now, if you want to support me to make more videos like this, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye. Wow.